Hey, good morning. I'd like to welcome everybody to Breakthrough Walls. I am Ken Walls. I'm your host, and I am really excited about the guy I've got on here today. Wait till you guys get to see that he's 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 an amazing dude. Very, very, very smart is the only words I can think of to describe him. And so without any more from me, I'd like to welcome Andrew Street to the show. Andrew, how you doing, man? Ken Walls, I'm doing really well, man. It's good to see you. You too, bro. Thank you for coming on. I know you're a busy guy um, down at, at the – right now he's at the beach, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm working from the coast. We've got a vacation rental house right here. I don't know if you can see out the window. Dude, that's We're awesome. We're sitting on the beach. That's awesome. But the beach, this is my office right here. You know, when I think, think of Texas, I don't think of beaches, but there's some of the most beautiful beaches in the world in Texas. I That's mean, a stretch, but I'll go with it. Yes, I, that, the, in South Texas Padre, River South Aaron. Padre's got some, don't they have some nice beach, beach down yeah, there? Yeah, you've got warm water and you've got, you know, some, some brown in the water, but it's, it's great. Yeah. It's, it's a good, good chance to get out here. Not a lot of crowds. Right. I got my wife and my daughter going to go meet with the county tomorrow to get a permit nice, and back dude. to Austin where my home base is. Is that now, are you from Austin originally? Born and raised and I haven't left. Wow. I heard there's other stuff to do in other places, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get around, but it's a, uh, it's a good hub. It's exploded with population and there's a huge talent pool for us. So I run a, a digital ad agency yeah. Best known for lead generation through Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. And, so, and we've really cornered out a market with, with automotive. So there's a lot of talent in Austin for, for us to, to recruit. Yeah. So you, you, um, <clears throat> so, okay. So this show, I created this show, um, to help to kind of give back. I mean, I, I've been very, very fortunate and blessed and, and lucky and whatever in life. And, and, you know, uh, <clears throat> one of, one of the things that, um, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the things that, that, um, I, I love doing is giving back to the world. And I think that that's, that's paramount to, to success in life is, is, you know, giving back. And so, um, you know, I think that we learn a lot about ourselves by listening to other people's, um, trials, tribulations, achievements, things like that. So, and I know you've done some pretty cool stuff. So you were born and raised in Austin. Is that, so you went to school, everything there? Yep. Did you go to college? Yeah, went to high school, went to college in Austin. Wow. And, uh, I lived in Los Angeles for a little while for work, uh, studied abroad, but ever, other than that, I've been, been rooted in Austin to, Wow. start my companies and to for work yeah but yeah and where are you you're up in ohio right columbus yeah north of columbus, columbus. yeah north of columbus you... and and i think austin and columbus have a couple of things in common um snow i'm kidding um <laughs> there's no snow in austin right so um no it's it's a tech hub Columbus is like considered the Silicon Valley of the Midwest now. And I've heard Austin is very similar. For sure. Yeah. Like a lot of startup accelerators and incubators and yeah. uh, little people starting their, their startups there. Right. It's cool. It's a cool atmosphere to be around uh, for inspiration, for funding, for ideas, for mentorship. Yeah. Then like, and then giving back, like it's like where you are right now. I'm, I'm envious. Why? Where your share. I don't know. You've got to be the jacket, the smiley eyes, the audience, the, the giving back that you're doing. So do you feel like you're actually, you're, you're giving back right now? And that Dude, this show is part of that, right? I, I absolutely am. And, and like yesterday was my 50th birthday, dude. Like I, I, I turned 50 and I'm like, how in God's name did that happen? Like, uh, it doesn't even, it doesn't equate. It does. I, I can't make sense of it, but, um, you know, the, the yesterday I decided, Hey, Lisa's on here. Lisa Copeland. She just gave the heart, the heart eyes, smiley face thing. So, um, <clears throat> but yeah, you know, I thought, 
you know, for me, I want to give back. So I did a big Facebook Live giveaway last night where I gave away my book and and three other books, three other authors' books to to people to one person to one person. So, um, you know, and I that's what I live for, man. I love to help yeah. other people succeed. That's cool, and you're in a good platform to be able to do it. And yeah. you were talking to me about the consulting that you're doing, yeah, uh, to help get started with Facebook. Is it really to help them take those steps towards being doing a lot of what you're doing, as far as getting the exposure and getting the video and the tech in place and the confidence to start posting these videos? Yeah, I, I mean it. It and honestly, dude, you know the and and I've talked about this before, but like for me, the very first time I started with Periscope because Facebook didn't have a a live video platform. And I remember when Facebook dove into it, I thought there's no way nobody's going to use Facebook for live streaming. Cause like all your family's on there, who wants to do that? You know, like, <laughs> and, and here it's taking over the entire world. It's, it's Facebook live is the new TV, you know, and, and you can get your news, you can get everything right at the instantly. And so I think I remember the very first time I went live on Periscope, dude, I was nervous as a hooker in church, man. I was freaking out. Like I was like, what if an ex-wife or girlfriend gets on here or, you know, I just everything was going running through my mind. And all of that's just it's made up in our heads, you know, and so um, one, you know, I do some consulting with people, you know, helping them get the confidence, teaching them how to go live, how to engage the audience, how to um, Lisa says Andrew Street handled my dealership and now my new company cars her way. That's right. Because because you're thanks. You, yeah. yeah. Lisa's a good person to have a seat at the table with. She's unbelievable. She's, she connected the dots between you and I. She did. She did. I saw her interview you. I saw her. Interview. Yeah. And it was fun. Yeah. I didn't quite know what to expect, but it was fun. We had a great conversation. And then when we're wrapping it up, it's like that was 50 minutes or whatever it was. <laughs> it goes fast. And it's just having a conversation with a friend about yeah. business and work and inspiration and what gets you out of bed and, uh, you know, areas of opportunity to give back. So, I'm just curious, like, what have you noticed since you've, when did you start doing the Facebook live videos? Oh, God. I don't even know. It's since the day they came out, pretty much, pretty close to that. So, however long that's been. Year and a half or years, so. Two, two or three. Okay. Three, yeah, maybe. Something like that. Uh, oh, you're going to interview me? <laughs> no, I'm just curious. I'm, I'm interested. I think you're much more interesting than I am. I have to sit here and talk about digital advertising Dude, and stop, metrics. Man. No, we're going to talk about a lot more than that, but go ahead. Go ahead and ask. That's funny. What have you noticed since you've started doing it? Um, I have noticed what, you know, Grant, I, I, Grant Cardone, I want a trip on Grant's private jet. And when they called to schedule me to come in to him to fly into Columbus to pick me up, I said, look, I, I'd rather just fly on my dime to Miami and spend a couple, two, three hours with Grant in a one-on-one. -on -one. And, you know, and, and I did, and it changed my entire life. And he said to me, dude, you got to manufacture a celebrity. You got to make yourself this, you got to create this, this, this personality for people to, to look up to and follow. You got to share what you know. Everybody knows something that everybody else doesn't, right? You know, stuff that I don't know. I mean, there, and, and you could go out just like Lisa, just like Jason Hallen, who's on here, Sandy Lewis, we can all go out and, and, and broadcast to, doesn't mean that everybody's going to like it. That's not what it means. I have people unfriend me and unfollow me every single day. And I think that that's cool, man. Unfriend me if, Hey, if we're not a good fit, we're not a good fit. Don't take up space on my friends list if we're not a good fit. Like, just move on. Like, there's there's seven and a half billion people on this planet, and literally half of them have a Facebook account. So yeah. I'm I'm good. I, I, there's three and a half billion other people that'll send me a friend request if we're not a good fit. 
So, you know, from my perspective, and it's like, well, you're just using people. No, I'm not using people. I want to connect with people that, that I'm on the same, you know, we're, we're, we, we vibrate at the same level. I don't want to connect with people that, that don't get me and I don't get them. Do you? No. And that's what's, it's good. You're slowly finding that niche or, or you found that niche of people who are into it. Yeah. You like the message and it's a self-selected population of people. Right. Right. Who are in, who get, get their job, who get their fix right. from, you know, the stuff that you're putting together. And if they don't, no problem. Right. It's that, it's that mentality though. It's hard to develop. You're not, it's not innate. You it's know, when not. people start, if there's haters, if there's people making, you know, fake profiles with your name and picture oh, and God. there's people do. Yeah. Those it's bastard. It's hard not to take some of that stuff personally if they're getting in the comment section. Yeah. But to be able to see the greater picture of the 99.9% of people that are following you, that are loving the content. Yes. They're loving the interviews. Yes. They, they, they love you, man. And and they love Bob Berg and they love Lisa Copeland and they love Sharon Lecter. And and again, not everybody's going to connect with Lisa Copeland, even though I think they're out of their freaking minds if they don't, because she's amazing. It. But not everybody's going to love her message. Right. Not everybody's going to love your message or my message or whatever. But here's here's one thing that's 100 percent for sure. And I'm going to quote Wayne Gretzky. You know what I'm going to say is, is you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. So, so it's like, like, dude, if, if I never go live on Facebook, if I never give it everything that I have, there's a 100% chance that people aren't going to know me. It's that, it's that simple. When I say, Hey, Facebook is the new TV. You know, and I and we we're not there yet, but you worked at Facebook. You helped develop some big portions of, of, of what Facebook does today, right? I developed a portion of Facebook that they don't do today. Oh. It, I, I was working there two thousand ten, eleven when they came out with a a Groupon competitor. Oh called Facebook Offers. So my team rolled that out. Really? And Pulled in a lot of local businesses, and the whole idea was, okay, Groupon's gone from zero to 100 miles an hour quickly. Yeah. But we have this big social platform. We have a lot of attention. What can we do to pull people and put in their credit card with Facebook, which was new? Right, right. To purchase through Facebook, to get local uh, businesses on board. So I was in San Francisco. We had a we had a set up in Austin and in Dallas. And so we'd call on local businesses, set them up with these super social things with uh, Groupon type feel where it's you take a limo with 10 of your friends and then you get an ice cream and then you guys go to this roller skating rink. Really overthought, yeah. really complicated. And then they, from Mark Zuckerberg himself, scrapped the, the initiative. Whoa. So we had, uh, we were kind of swimming around lost in the office for a while. Like, okay, what do we do? Are we working? Okay, we have all these clients that we've worked with. <laughs> oh so we started getting a front row education. Me and uh, one, a couple other people that, that's, that stayed with Facebook for a yeah. while trying to figure out where we fit in. So we got a front row education on leveraging the platform. Yeah. Building out ad campaigns, leveraging data, leveraging websites. Then we talked with enough of the clients that we had been working with. We were like, hey, look, we're not doing anything. Uh, so we started giving them some ad credits. And building out some ad campaigns for them. Okay. Had enough uh, traction with them to say, hey, look, if we branched off, would you guys continue working with us? We got enough yeses to where we had, a, we had a business. We didn't have an LLC. We didn't have a bank account. The first month I was like, just write, you can write the check to me. <laughs> just hold on to the check, but pr you promise, pinky promise, that you're going to be sending us a check. I'm right. going to form the bank account. I'm going to do all the logistical stuff I need to do. Right. You know, for, for month two. Wow. And so, and we boogied, and now we found a, a niche. But yeah, while I was at Facebook, it was it was cool. It was a really good learning experience. I, I can imagine. Did you did you get a chance to meet Zuck? Zuckerberg? No, we saw he did like video conferences with everybody. Okay. But but no, he he didn't come to Austin. We were I was at the Austin office. Okay. Primarily. And so we never came through town when I was there. But you started in, in San Francisco, is that right? Or 
Uh, yeah, that okay. was my market too that I was I was working with. So I was okay. selling into the San Francisco market. With oh, okay. The soup companies and these cool bars and cool things that they have going on there. Yeah, but it, yeah. I, I mean that kind of morphed. It, it, I mean, because Facebook has the marketplace, like right. It, it kind of right. It, well, excuse me. It was Facebook Deals, is what we were called, yeah, okay. which morphed into Facebook Offers. Okay, which okay. is where you can run as as a car wash five dollars off your car wash. You put some money behind it to promote that through people's personal news feed. Got That's it. the offer. And then there's Marketplace, which is totally separate, but okay. it's basically the Craigslist killer. And it's – have you messed around with it much? A little bit. I, I You know, I actually have been thinking about putting some of my services on there, but I, I, I haven't I haven't dove into it at all. It's worth testing because it costs $0 to do That's it. That's crazy. They have the luxury to be able to test these things out without monetizing it for a while, just building up enough attention, yeah. enough products listed on there until they say, you know, maybe it might be a eBay or a Craigslist type of, of model where, okay, you post your first five things for free, that sixth one we're going to have to charge you. You know, I, I think, um, I, I, I think Facebook's going to like, I mean, Facebook, they kind of already do run the world. And I've said for years before Facebook was super popular like it is now, um, I think they only had a billion users maybe when I said this. But, but like they know more about you and I than Google does. And, and, and uh, because they're tracking everything everywhere you go. They know when you're going to the bathroom. They know what restaurants you frequent the most. They know literally everything. That doesn't mean that they give that data away or that they sell it or any of that, but they know everything about us. That makes them, because data being so powerful, makes them the most powerful company in the world. Do you agree with that or not? Uh. <clears throat> Yeah. I mean, they can harness that power for, you know, as you've seen, it can be used for ill, but they're sitting on so much data that everything I look through really is, is through the lens of a marketer, right. an advertiser. And it's by far the most cost effective platform. Nice. I've done a lot with, I've done a lot with radio and TV back in yeah. the early aughts. Uh, but now with just the amount of data they're sitting on with Facebook's data, your age, your interests, where you are right now, where yeah. you live, uh, your marital status, right. the websites you visit, because now they have a pixel on you know, yeah. large websites. Yeah, and they follow you so, around after that. Yeah, yeah. so you got all that data that Facebook has. Right. And now they're buying data, which is slowly getting phased out to a large extent with those consumer warehouses like Polk, yeah. uh, Oracle, Data Logics, right. where you're uh, your mortgage company is selling your household income. Your, you know, they have access to your credit score, have access to, you know, uh, what are you currently shopping for? Uh, how do you spend with your credit card? Do you buy stuff that's expensive online a lot? Do you buy beauty goods? Do you buy, right. uh, you know, organic vegetables mm -hmm. at the grocery store with your credit card selling all your data? So now you can harness all those platforms of data as well as your data which is your CRM, your customer database, yeah. your website traffic, you know, your fans, yeah. to start to create specific audiences. Yeah. Where at the end of the day, your your message is much more prescribed, or your customers are getting more of a prescribed message. Right. So I'm, I'm crazy about Facebook as an advertising platform, and Instagram, just because they're they're owned by the same the same animal. Right. And you can you can tie your ads together. It's it's incredible. And and again, I you know just from, I mean, look, the reality is everybody on this planet that is in business or in sales. Which if you're in sales, you're in your own business. But um, everybody would like to learn how to organically make things happen as opposed to paid advertising making things happen. And so that's one of the, the things. It's like I used to do SEO. At one point, I was ranked number one in the world if you typed in SEO company into Google. I was ranked number one in the world. But... That's a good sign. Dude, but... Right. But Google 
just and, and let's just have let's make this a tech conversation man so you know i built my first website in 94 so 1994 and and so i've done a few of them now and and in google just like facebook people get really really ticked off about the algorithm changes with facebook or with google and you know then mark zuckerberg comes out and says well we're doing it to make it more family friendly and no you're not you want advertising revenue let's just be real be real with people right google's like we want to make sure everybody is has a fair shot at organic rankings and so they put out all these algorithm changes the the at the end of the day google wants you to pay them money and they charge right. hefty Hefty, hefty, hefty for for the 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 pay per click, right? That's what affords them to be able to drive around every single road on the planet and take a picture of it, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> put it on a map. Yeah, right, right. They have drone yeah, footage too now. To be able to do it, do yeah, what? It's incredible. Yeah, it's uh, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. So you know, but they they do they want they don't want you to be ranked organically at the top of Google. They want you to pay them, right? And mm -hmm. Facebook doesn't. It's like the Facebook algorithm with business pages. I, I've tried to explain this to people. Like you know, people are like, "Well, I post you know a bunch on my Facebook page, my business page, and and like I don't get any likes." And it's like, why is that? You want to explain it? I know you know. <laughs> Uh, it's, when, when I was working there, it was literally like a hundred percent of your fans would see your content, right? If they get on Facebook, right. and then you know, it started to whittle whittle it down to say, okay, let's give people content that they think is more relevant, right? So you'd post it and would distribute it to a handful of of your fans on the page, and then if people like it, they comment on it, they share it, and Facebook's like, okay, there's something going on with this post, let's distribute that to a larger audience, right? Uh, then I get, I get the argument of saying, Hey, we want to make people's newsfeed more personal, less of the brands that they follow, more of their friends that, that they're tagged in more photos with people that their cousins, you know, wh where they're saying, okay, let's prioritize the, the ranking of how people are seeing posts. Right. What's that number one post? What's that number two post? That third post, we make that an ad. So that's where, and also Facebook went public. Saying, okay, let's monetize. We've got a board. We've got uh, to start making some money. So that's right. an opportunity for people to reach into their pockets. Right. And, you know, by simply either hitting the boost button or by just going through and making ad campaigns to getting that distribution. Right. What's, be think, what's better? What, what's better, a boost or an ad? An ad by far. Yeah. But a boost is an easy way for you know, anybody off the streets to put in 20 bucks and just see that line graph go up into the right, their waves up into the right on your end. <laughs> That's showing the reach, the engagement. Right. And then say, okay, would it make sense for us to come up with more of a marketing plan to pull inbound traffic to the website, to retarget people, to do lead generation right. and all the things that aren't really available with just boosting posts. Right. Right. And so, I think, well, he, go ahead. I was just going to ask you, do you spend money at all on Facebook? I do. do. You, you do. Okay. Yeah. But all this growth and the exposure for the interviews that you're doing is all organic. Is that right? Yes, it is. It's word of you're mouth. One of, you're the yin to the, to the yang of what I do. All I do is the paid stuff for people. <laughs> on the other end, you, <laughs> you've quartered uh, out the organic reach. You said the, but dude, I only have like 350 likes or 340 likes on my, on my breakthrough walls page. Um, but you know, I don't really push that a lot. I, 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 you know, and I think I spent 20 bucks once to, you know, get more likes or something, but, yeah. um, you, know. but you have a personal page, right? With a large following. Yeah. You can merge those together and just have it be one Ken walls incorporated location Mer merge the my personal and my 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 no no no. keep your personal profile oh okay which is most friends and family but then have your business page just have one of those yeah i've got the ken walls fan page or public page i've got twenty three thousand followers there and then i've got um uh, like breakthrough walls i kind of i created that as because i put all of the breakthrough walls 
interviews on or this will be on that page, right? So yeah. you can ease, and there's nothing else but these interviews that I leave on that page. So you can just scroll through and, and watch each interview from that page. Um, so, and hey, by the way, Lisa says, can you still boost? Is that the same as sponsored? Yeah, so it'll come through somebody's news feed and, and you'll see a post from a brand or a, uh, a a public figure and it'll say sponsored next to it. So if you do boost, that'll it'll come up as a sponsored ad. There's not really a control that much on frequency and things like that. Right. But it's a good way to say, here's 20 bucks. Let me get that to all my fans and people who are friends of my fans who live in my city. So their friends' names will be in the ads yeah. and get a little taste get a little taste of the exposure the 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 targeting the 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 uh demographics capabilities of facebook advertising i don't think people truly understand (laughs) like it's pretty deep i mean it's really really deep so and as a matter of fact the last two presidential elections i believe were won because of facebook because of social media the way that the those candidates used Facebook. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously uh, they were one because of other reasons, but they real really utilize social media well, very well. Right, especially when they're like spending money, and, and it's more yeah. evident than in the last election than ever. Yeah, where it's saying we need to swing these few states. You know, Pennsylvania, Ohio. Mm. I'm not going to get political with this, but just saying, okay, we want to get in front of people there who have lost their coal mining jobs, talk to them about, you know, opportunities with those types of uh, careers and stimulating that economy. And here's the candidate for you guys. Right. And it was successful. And saying instead of targeting, you know, maybe the 11 million people that are in Pennsylvania, it's saying, okay, let's just narrow down our audience to people that are in these rural communities people who have this household income, potentially this credit score, people who uh, are not really politically aligned, strong left leaning and, you know, somebody that's sort of more independent and let's try to sway them. Right. Right. Yeah. And it's, it could work. I don't know about the Russian stuff. I'm not a part of that, but uh, Lisa, Lisa literally just said, no, it was the Russians. (laughs) I thought, yeah. With a bunch of laughing cry faces. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, again, I think that anybody, and, and again, that's something that I talk about when I'm, when I'm consulting with a client. I, I say, look, you, you've got to learn how to, I mean, unless you have a, a, an unlimited budget or some massive budget, which most, you know, small to medium sized companies don't. Um, you know, and, and I, as a matter of fact, I have, I'm a partner of Google's as well. Right. And Facebook mm-hmm. called me, I told you this a while ago, Facebook called me four years ago to form a marketing partnership when they first rolled out the, the bringing on agencies to, to and, and so I, I did it and some chiropractors ad, they kept shutting it down because we were, we were showing a red thyroid and and they kept shutting the ad down saying that it was sexual in nature or something i'm like what is who's the freaks working at facebook saying that that like it was just a woman a nicely dressed woman showing a red spot on her neck like but so we kept changing it adjusting it they shut my agency account down i said you got to be freaking kidding me what is wrong with you people so you know um for i i i you know say i went through all their training so you know the facebook marketing partnership thing whatever it was but you know i never ever ever recommend google ever i have people call me and say well what about would you handle my google adwords campaign i'm like no i will not no i don't want anything to do with it like i don't want you calling me going dude why am i spending fifty dollars a click uh, and and me having to go because you're not advertising on Facebook, <laughs> like it, it just makes more sense. Um, anyway, go ahead. Yeah, uh, go ahead. I mean, I got I've I've I, sometimes I just get these thoughts. Yeah, there's a good there's a good play that that works well with Google, like the PPC side, and then Google has YouTube, and there's a smart yeah. place to do there, and then a large display network. Yes. So like. Facebook 
is is the the who that you're adver- advertising to where I, I think Google's more of the what. Right. So with the what, like in the automotive world, I'm looking for a 2010 Toyota Tacoma with under 50,000 miles. That's me getting on Google, trying to tell Google what I'm looking for. Right. And that's where if, you know, those dealerships or brands are really well aligned and have that in their inventory. Yeah. That'll pop up first. Right. And bring me right to what I'm looking for. Where Facebook is, I'm there, you know, when I'm in the Houston area right now, there's 5.5 million people. Right. In a 50 mile radius of me that are on Facebook and Instagram an average of 20 times a day. So I got this audience of 5.5 million people, which is huge. Massive. Now I have to say those people are all getting on there not to find that 2010 Tacoma. Right. They're getting on Facebook. They don't know why. They're going to look at some friends and some family and get this little dopamine and scroll through an average. They scroll like this an average of 300 feet a day. That's I, insane. I just saw some conference. Yeah. People 300 feet a, a day? An entire, an entire football field with your thumb. <laughs> oh my so switch your thumb up at least. So an, a football field worth of scrolling. Wow. So the idea is, okay, that person's there on Facebook. We have that 2010 Tacoma. And I want to get in front of not that 5.5 million people, but maybe the 3,700 people who are currently shopping for pre-owned pickup trucks under $10,000 in my market. Yeah. Now I want to pull that truck through their news feed. And if they're interested, click through to that vehicle detail page or a lead form. And if they're not, keep scrolling. Like what you're talking about with, you know, fans that grow and shrink and they leave and come. Yep. But just, okay, if you're not interested, no problem. Keep scrolling. You'll yep. find your friends in those memes later. We're, so that's kind of the, uh, that's kind of the way I look at uh, Google and Facebook. It's just searching versus discovering things. I, I do. That's best. I, I'm going to go back and watch that over and over and over. That's possibly the best description I've ever heard. Even Lisa said good description. So what well, I said, so I need, is there a recording of this? I need to figure yeah. out what I did there. Yeah, <laughs> dude, you, you nailed it though. You're right. <clears throat> you said why versus what? Right. I, and I love that. I, I love that. I think that you're right. There are when it's it's a very specific thing that somebody. However, I'll tell you something. I've been and I've thought about. I've actually like went. Wow, I did that. I've been going to the Facebook search bar and typing in exactly what I'm looking for and finding it. So you know. Yeah. Yeah, for pages and things yeah, like that. Because listen, the thing is this, man, and and I think you'll agree that we we all have this strong desire. I was watching a, a um, <clears throat> Mel Robbins video this morning where she's talking about, you know, the mind is, is uh, the human mind is literally on autopilot to do everything possible to keep us from getting hurt, right? So, so one of the biggest buying factors when we're looking at a big purchase like an automobile or a house or anything really is social proof. Well, Google doesn't really offer social proof. They offer a bunch of wacko sites out there that any, you know, any whack job can leave a review on. But if you go to Facebook, dude, Andrew Street talked about this and and I know that guy and he said this about it and it's right here in this platform. So I think and I it's only a little tiny prediction, but but I think that the the Facebook search is going to become more and more relevant. They've tried a few times. Like I think in maybe 2012, 13, they started doing like a paid search. Right. Where if you search particular products, I don't know if it's still there. I haven't seen it in years, but yeah. it would populate paid uh, uh, results first and then those pages that you might be searching for. Yeah. Uh, I think it was probably challenging to, monet- to, to make money doing that, saying, okay, are people going on Facebook to search for a go-kart or are they going there to search for consulting? Right. Right. Maybe not, No, probably. but that's where they're going to, they could find it easily there. Sure. But it's, it's not going to be as dependent on the search bar. Sure. I agree with you. Uh, Yeah. I, I, but I do agree with that. I do agree with that. I I think that it, it is. Do you ever, do you ever, um, do you ever search for something on Google and then check it on Facebook? Yeah. Yeah. Like what's an example? 
that you've done? A, 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 um, a restaurant. Done it. A restaurant. I've done it. Yeah. Yeah. Just see if, you know, a lot yeah. of people have checked in there. See if any of your friends like it. Yeah. But like what you're talking about with uh, that social proof, yeah. I think is one of the smartest things that, that Facebook's done is inventing that like button. Oh, God. Which everybody's copied since then. But without thinking for more than one second, you can just click a thumb. Yep. And now you're endorsing that brand forever. <coughs> Excuse me. You're right. Yeah. And so now with your fans, uh, you know, the 20,000 fans you have, they each have an average of whatever, 350 friends. You have this huge network of people outside of just your followers who have friends that already endorsed you. Yeah. So now your idea of if you can run ads to those people saying, you know, let's just target people who are between these ages, who are more entrepreneurial, who are in tech and say, uh, you know, here's Ken Walls. Here's, you know, the books he's published, but here's four of your personal friends that endorse Ken. So that message is going to go a lot further to have that social proof, to have yeah. that, that third party endorsement. Yep. With that person who did nothing else except for say, okay, I like this. I'll tell, I'll tell you, I'll, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give away one of my secrets right here. Um, I told, I told my brother who sells, he sells for a solar company. <laughs> Dude, stop. That's why I'm here. I'm here to, I'm here to learn from you, Ken. Dude, uh, this is an interview about you, man, but I, I, you just brought something up I want to share with people because if you're in sales, hey. Um, you, you need to start doing this. Um, my brother sells solar and we were playing golf the other day for my, my birthday golf round. And, and I said, um, he's talking about how, how awesome he's doing and, and, you know, he loves this industry. And I said, you want to triple your income? And he's like, how? And I go, I can teach you how right now, next five minutes. He goes, no way, dude. I'm like, dude, do you want to triple your income? He's like, yeah, tell me how. Okay, when you show up to an appointment and you're talking to Mr. and Mrs. Street about putting solar up on their, their roof, are you already friends with them on Facebook when you get there? And he's like, no. And I go, are you friends with them on Facebook before you leave? And he's like, no. Some of them will send me a friend request later. I go, okay. So when you get there and I sit down, I go, hey, by the way, you guys use Facebook or Instagram? Which one do you use the most? And, oh, you're on Facebook? Hey, I'm Andrew, I'm going to send you a friend request right now, right here. from. I'm sitting in your living room on your couch talking to you. I'm sitting – get your phone out, man. Accept my friend request. Let's be friends, bro. Come on, fist bump. And then you're going to be like, yeah, okay. And now you're no longer buying your solar panels from st some stranger. You're buying them from a friend. I'm your friend now. We're friends, dude. Come on, buy from me. And when you buy from me, we're going to go outside the, the street family along with, with Mr. Walls out into the front yard and we're going to do a selfie, a family selfie with your roof in the background and I'm going to draw a circle on that picture and say, hey, do you mind if I tag you on Facebook congratulating you on your new new getting off the grid, stop paying the evil electric company, you're going to, do you mind if I tag you? And you're going to go, no, dude, that's awesome. Yeah, we love being, ta all right, great, I'm, I'm putting it up right now. Go like it, share it. And, and what happens is exactly what you were just talking about. Now, Andrew Street and Mrs. Street, and all of their friends and family are going to see this picture with some freaking weird sales guy in their front yard with a, a red circle around the roof showing where their solar panels are going to go. And guess what happens for me, the sales guy? You get triple your revenue. At least. At least, right? So now dude, that's smart. It's super smart. I love this, dude. My, he he's already done it two different two, on two different appointments. He's got six referrals from those already. So the uh, the averages are there, man. And birds of a feather flock together, and everybody wants to keep up with the Joneses. So why in the hell if I'm Andrew Street's friend and I'm and I see him getting solar, like, dude. You ain't beating me out, man. I want solar too. I want off the grid, right? So, and if it's and if if the the message is is put out there properly, and it's the same thing with car sales people or anything else. But you know, people don't. I I, I think that people just don't think it all the way through. Like face, it's like Grant Cardone says: Facebook is not for family and friends. It's for business. All right. It's for business. 
I, I mean, it's that like, but what about my kids' pictures? Dude, you've seen it. I've, I reached out to you and said, dude, can you help me? <laughs> like, you know, my, I've had, I've had so many fake profiles put out there. I've had people reach out to me and say, uh, you, somebody used your pictures and ripped my mom off for $10,000. I'm like, dude, if you, if your mom sent somebody $10,000 based on a picture, your problems are way deeper than, than, than somebody using my picture. So anyway, and I, I'm not saying I, I just feel bad about that. I mean, but still like, I don't have control over that. It wasn't my fault. I didn't do it. So, you know, anyway, that, that, that I, I, I went a little deep, but l- let me ask you this. No, 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 no. I, like the, the story with your brother yeah. and how he's posted that with two different clients. Yeah. Two different people that he became friends with while he's in the middle of the sale. Yeah. Walked outside with them, took a picture, circled their roof where the, the yeah. solar panels are going to be installed. And he said he got six leads. Six referrals. Yeah. Six referrals he said of one that. of them, one of them told him on a phone call yesterday that they have six more coming, just them coming to him. So think about You got 500 friends, man. It's not, it's not rocket science like what you're doing like what with marketers with me with people on our side of the desk we're swimming in data and metrics and okay there's new there's new columns now that's the cost per landing page view is that different than cost per click okay that is different what's the you know it's just so easy to lose the art of marketing and get way into the deep 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 advertising nonsense which is not nonsense but it's you know you can get down this rabbit hole we're up front it's like hey here's a way to grow business without reaching into your pocket. I, I, I mean, it takes, yeah. takes a little charisma and a small strategy. It doesn't take I much, man. If I was selling cars at a car dealership, dude, I'd be doing a Facebook live probably once every two hours. I, I, I mean, I would, and I would tag the dealership, make sure that it was, was, you know, connected to the, the dealership page. I'd be walking the lot. I don't know what that is. I've never done. I've never sold cars, but I'd be walking the inventory. Is that what they call it? And and I'd be mm-hmm. showing, hey, check out this new Camry. It's freaking awesome. Look at it here. Uh, look, I'd open up the door. I go, can you smell that new car smell? Like you're going to smell it in your head. You're, all, you're like, you're, 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 you got to get people involved to get them in, man. That uh, Again, I don't know that that's the right way. I've never sold cars, but, but you know, I, I, I think people are missing out on the biggest opportunity mm-hmm. ever on planet earth. And that's this platform. I agree. It, it takes a leap. It takes a, a small leap of faith Yeah, it really and, does. A, and a test. Like what was the viewership of your first, huh? Uh, what, what was the viewership of your first video? Has it been increasing? Um, steadily yeah i mean it goes up it goes up i sorry some java update just popped up on my screen um so it wants me to update my Java. <laughs> like what <laughs> yeah <laughs> like right in the middle of an interview stop that but you know um i don't know I, I mean you know i've had um i mean i've done literally hundreds and hundreds of facebook lives i've done over a thousand periscopes i've done you know i mean i've done a lot of live videos, um, but I, you know, uh, so my my view it varies though. It var- I'll get a thousand. I I interviewed Emily Frasilla, Andy Frasilla's wife. Um, she's uh, her video got like two point one or two point two thousand views. Like it's it, you know it's done pretty well. But again, the replay viewers, right? Mm-hmm. So so. I, I want to get I want to I want to get back to making this interview about Andrew Street. Okay, though. yeah. Um, because yeah. I, I think we went way off and we only got about ten ten minutes or so left. And I, I just want to I, I want to talk a little bit about because look, you've obviously become very successful in life and in business, and and you know your stuff. If if anyone watching this hasn't figured that out, then then you know just keep watching because he knows his stuff. But. Um, you know, what do you think is the biggest thing? And this is to help people have a breakthrough. So what do you think the biggest thing is that 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 you see holding people back from success in life or in business? Uh, consistency, I'd say, is a big one. And then the second one, maybe just like finding a, 
you know, if it's pretty broad getting further into a niche. Yeah. So like with the consistency part, uh, is a, is quest love from the roots, the drummer. Yeah. It wasn't super, uh, it was just some interview with him talking about how the roots became the roots. Yeah. And he's just like, you gotta go to practice. He's like, no matter what's going on every Tuesday and Thursday, we get together in the morning and we practice. Yep. You know, and even if you're terrible, like you're going to become a good band at some point. If right. you keep playing with the same guys and listening to it and recording it and learning. Um, yeah, it, it's, you know, not giving up right after you, 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 I see your guitar. Like if you play the guitar. I've played for um, a long time. Yeah. 43 years. And on year one, you weren't that good. I'm still not that good. <laughs> I haven't been consistent. Right. I mean, I'm all right, but I haven't been consistent. You're good enough to have a guitar in the in the shop where I, you are I, right I'm now. Good Everyone's going to assume. I've that. played on Facebook Live. So you can Live. pick it up. I've, I've played okay. on Facebook Live, yeah. So You should have one of your riffs do the video intro. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I like I'm, the. I actually, I like the techno. That I'm, you had. I'm not sure. Thanks. I, I'm not sure that I, I, I'm good enough to do a riff for an intro. But, <laughs> but, go but go ahead. Uh, what was my second one? Oh yeah. Uh, I just came up with it. But like, as far as like identifying that niche, it was been, it was just dramatically impactful for me. Yeah. To you know, when we first started, I was just an ad agency doing Facebook and Instagram advertising. Right. Sure, we had a credible backstory. We were good. We had a lot of processes in place for reporting. Right. But it was me having to learn everybody's business. I'd go in and be like, okay, you're a chiropractor company. Oh, you're, you're a franchise. Of, there's three locations. Okay, but he owns those two. And you, okay, so you do the, you know, okay, and what do you, you, you crack people like a, a glow stick and what's the benefit? You know, who are you trying to target? Do you take insurance? <laughs> Do you have a CRM? Do you have a database? Right. Figuring out this company. And it's like, okay, where do you get your content? Where, you know, then I go to a dentist office, then I go to a sub shop chain. And then when we started getting a lot of success in automotive, we had good case studies. We were starting to get a network. We were presenting at those conferences. So we just dropped everything else. Yeah. Outside of automotive. So now I know, who I partner with, I know who to talk to, I know how to talk to them, I know the questions to ask, I know the conferences to go to, I know the tools that they use, I know a lot of the pain points that I can help dig up and figure out, okay, what are we focusing on this month? I see services are really slipping or yeah. used car, or new car. So it's a good way for you to become a bigger fish in a smaller pond. Sure, yeah. It's like, is there in the niches? You drill, you drill down, you drill down. Right. It, sure. For sure. If you serve everybody, you serve nobody is what everyone says. They do and say that. Do that. Yet Facebook and Google seem to be doing okay and they serve everybody. Yeah. Well, if we're <laughs> Facebook or Google, then we'd let's have a different conversation about serving everybody. <laughs> right. I'm just, I'm kidding, man. I'm kidding. Um, so, so I, and I, dude, I've, I, I agree with you a thousand percent. One, one, that's probably been the biggest challenge. I've, I've been in the digital space for 25 years, man. And, and like, you know, um, the biggest challenge is that it's, it's like, okay, what are we going to hone in on and, and what are we going to get really, really good at and, and how do we expand and grow that? So, you know. Yeah, and it, put, it puts you in the right um, mindset. You know yeah. who you serve, how you're serving them, and right. when you get up in the morning, who you're working for. Yeah. Uh, and other opportunities are going to come across your plate that yeah. you don't need to say no to and just say, you know, don't worry about the automotive, you know, my specialty. Yeah. Same tools, same conversations apply for most businesses. Right. Here's my retainer, and if they say yes to that, then figure that one out. Right, right. But uh, – yeah, so so being in a niche has been wildly beneficial for me. Yeah, and you know it's allowed me to branch out and start. We started doing a bunch of stuff with vacation rental properties. My wife runs those, and wow, I help her awesome. with the market. And yeah, is, so is it all beach beach stuff? Uh, beach and lake. It's all waterfront okay. stuff. Nice. So sounds like I need to make a trip to Texas. <laughs> ring it, yeah. If you come through Texas, reach out. Yeah. yeah. I'll, 
yeah. I'll roll up the carpet. I keep Lisa and I keep talking about me coming down to Austin. So, um, but let, you know, if I like, if you let's say I don't know if you've ever gotten a call like this. I have, um, and I've been in this position. You know, I I have the 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 gift and the blessing of being a recovered alcoholic. So I I I drank like a oh dear God for a long time. I've I, I'm coming up on 16 years sober now. But there was a time when you know I I drink so much I couldn't remember what planet I was on. And so like you know as a result of that type of behavior, there were times when I found myself homeless one or a couple few times and and or unable to pay electric bills or what you know and excluding the alcohol part if somebody reached out to you and said man i I, i'm i'm working my ass off i'm i'm stuck i can't figure out i i'm i'm losing stuff i'm my can't pay my bills and blah 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 like what's the number one thing you're going to say to that person to help them break through that wall because i'm sure there's been on some level you've been there where it's like oh my god things are not well right now how do we get through this what would you tell somebody like dude this is what you need to do tough spot uh you know to to be in um for me to answer this question for one but oh uh, i think something that was you know when i i didn't take things seriously i was not really well guided until i was probably 27 is when i finally was like okay i need to start making some strides in the right direction and you know build a career and a family and you know start looking what's what's around two turns from now and not you know not not in the right on my horizon so uh i mean it, this isn't quite the answer to that question but I, I thought it was really valuable so when i got out of college i started selling radio selling media selling ads which was really challenging to go from zero to learning how to sell yourself yeah. you know starting yeah. by selling yourself and what can get you in front of people to build that level of trust yeah to ask enough questions to help to tailor a product that's tough and immeasurable to help them with their business. Right. You know, to, to learn how to sell. And then if you can sell something, you can go a lot of directions with your career. And it's not necessarily just being in sales your whole life. It could be in management. It could be, you know, selling yourself. Yeah. Uh, but it, you know, it, it's tough. You know, if it's not substance abuse and, and alcohol, you know, if there's not problems with that, that's a good problem to have. Right. right. If your problems, uh, yeah. If if it's right. just, hey, I'm, I've I've fallen on bad luck. I'm having trouble paying my bills. Right. But you're not having, you know, issues with the family, issues with sub. You know, that's a good spot to be in to where it is. Saying, okay, now I can put some time towards perfecting my skills right. while somebody pays me to perfect my skills. And that's getting, uh, you know, an internship with, uh, you know, anybody. You know, that's where, you know, some smart dude that just called me, he got out of college and he looked at like some of the influential people around town doing different things. And he was like, you know, I'm just starting a marketing agency. I want to be the biggest in the city. And now I'm just going through this list of people reaching out to them to see if I can take them to get coffee. Wow. I wish I had done that when I got out of college. So he I reached out to you around. to take you to cof- get coffee. Yeah, yeah. He just brilliant. came across my name through uh, whatever, some startup incubator. It's brilliant. I couldn't say yes fast enough. That's I had nothing to buy. I had nothing to sell. <laughs> I just love this kid's tenacity to reach out and say, hey, look, same thing, but yeah. I, want to, I want to meet you, and I want to meet 19 <laughs> other of you. And now you want to help him. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And, and you're somebody now look at that him. He probably could help me. Huh? Right. Yeah. It's just he wanted to start an agency, yeah. and I've done everything the wrong way and the right. You know, I've yeah. figured out what's worked well for us yeah. to, you know, be in a good position. And I could help. I could help him make some big steps to, you know, step over some problems that, that we came across when we got started. Yeah. That's right. So I, it could be that, you know, something like that. Just reach out to, influential people that have been there and done that like a yeah. Ken Walls say, Hey, can I, can I borrow five minutes of your time? Yeah. And then it ends up being 25 minutes, yeah, an hour and a half, whatever it is. That's right. 
You're right, dude. Get on somebody's radar who can help point you in the right direction. Yep. That's why, you know, I, I mean, I, I like, like, uh, you know, I know I bring up Grant Cardone, but like, I, I, uh, that's, I reached, I reached out to him. Not, I mean, there's zero percent chance of getting a hold of Grant Cardone unless you already know somebody that can put you in touch. And you gotta have, you gotta have some cash if you're gonna talk to Grant. But back when he first was started in the business sector, not the automotive space, <clears throat> I, I was like, I'm, I'm gonna make this work. And, and so I had, I had a couple of, I had a client that owned a winery here that I had built her website and, and I said, hey, um, I need a couple of custom bottles of wine with a custom label and, and I have my designer make it. And it didn't cost me a ton, but I flew, I put my assistant on an airplane, flew her to Miami and delivered these two bottles of custom made wine with Grant Cardone and his family on the label. And it blew his mind. He called me that day with my assistant sitting right there in his office. And, and it was the very first time I'd had a conversation with the guy. And, and so, you know, how, how did I do that? I, I did something extraordinary that nobody else had done. And, and it's the same thing you're talking about with this kid reaching out to you saying, dude, I, I, I want to I wanna buy the top marketing people in this city a cup of coffee. I want to buy you coffee, man. And I'll even buy you lunch. Like, you know, do, Brian Tracy, do you know, you know who Brian Tracy is, right? No, it sounds like I should, though. <clears throat> He's a um, legendary sales trainer. Um, Zig Ziglar, you ever heard of Zig Ziglar? Right. right. Yeah, yeah. He's right up there with Zig, right? So Brian Tracy, um, you know, I, I remember years ago he, wrote, he has a, an audio program called The Psychology of Success and another one called The Psychology of Selling. And that and, and in that he talks about that. Like, dude, go buy somebody that you want to emulate coffee or lunch. If you want to be a millionaire, start taking millionaires out to lunch. It's the truth. And I've done it. I've sat with multi I know they're multimillionaires because I've seen their black cards, you know, and I, I and I'm like like I've sat with them at lunch. And I have a few hundred dollars to my name and I buy lunch when I know they, can, dude, they can afford it way better than I can. But that would be the dumbest move ever on my part to let them buy lunch. It, mm-hmm. would, it would just be dumb. And, and I just intuitively know, I, not intuitively, I learned that from, from listening to other successful people. That's what it takes. It is. And it's like your network too. Yeah. It's like, uh, you know, if you're down and out and not, you know, you, you can't put your bills together. It's like, who are you hanging out with? Which is hard to control sometimes. Yes. And everybody wants to have a network and friends, but like you're saying, find a way to align with people who are, you know, either hitting home runs or they're, you know, at least hitting doubles. You know, they're <laughs> right. getting out of bed. They're making their bed. They're off to work. You know, they're doing something. Yeah. They got a pulse. They're not living off the dole yeah. and uh, align with those people. Yeah, I agree, dude. As a matter of fact, I'm reading, uh, do you know Chris Saraceno? No. He's another uh, Lisa Copeland connection, but he wrote a book called The Theory of oh, Five. I saw that. It's yeah, a, I saw this. I just started, I'm, I'm actually not reading the hard copy. I'm reading it on my phone on, on Kindle, but... Um, I, it's, it's an incredible book and it's about the five people you hang out with and how they affect the five closest people. It's, that's Mm -hmm. what it's about. Because if you're hanging out with a bunch of broke complainers, you're going to be one of them. Yeah. It's that simple. Or you can be the the leader of the broke complainers (laughs) or you can be. Uh, that's interesting. I want to check that book out. It's, it's a good book. the th- is, I was thinking about this. Is there an audio version of Walls of Wisdom yet? Um, no, there's not. Oh, I thought, no, there's not. I was literally That's- thinking about that this morning, dude. That's weird that you said that. I'll make an audio version just for you. Okay, thanks. It's 72 I, pages. I, it won't take me but a couple of hours. <laughs> oh, I could even read that. Never mind. Or 74 pages. I, I know, right? Okay. With a little yeah. build up. Well, cool. And you said you've got. So you, did you say that Grant Cardone offered you a, f- uh, a flight in his plane? Yes. And you did not, you declined it? I did. 
I, can you take I, him up on that? Come down to ta- come down to Austin, and me and you and Lisa get together. Say that again. Take him up on that offer and say, <laughs> "Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna cash in on that offer." No, it's 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 expired now. I I I, I said I would rather spend a couple of hours with with Grant in you know f- for his counsel, just you know bouncing my business off of him and getting feedback, and it was the most valuable thing I could have ever done. Seriously. Smart man. He is. Yeah, both of you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and you've done a lot of, you know, it seems like you're aligning your steps with things that he's done as far as getting that exposure, helping people out, you know, finding ways that you can deliver value. That's it. To an audience. Mm-hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, man, you know, I don't I don't care how many I don't care if you have ten dollars to your name or you have, you know, ten trillion dollars. I, I, if you're not helping people out in this world and you're not helping other people move the ball down the field, then you just suck as a human being and you're going to die a miserable, miserable, lonely P.O.S., so, <laughs> and if you go to the Urban Dictionary, if you don't know what POS stands for. So, like, you know, I, I mean, it, it, at the end of the day, man, it's it, I want people to show up. I want people to miss me when I'm dead, right? And we're all going to die, dude. Nobody gets out alive. I want people to be like, damn, he was a good guy. Why did he have to go? <laughs> yeah. You can go back and revisit him through all this content you put together. Yeah. That's it, man. And and so and it's about helping people, man. So how can I help you, man? How how do people follow you? How where do they follow you? Where are you most active? Uh got a website, Andrew, or it's uh dealeromg.com, dealer online marketing group. So both of those websites, dealer online marketing group dot com. Or dealer, dealer OMG. OMG. All the all my agency stuff, which is my nine to five. Yeah. Uh, and then face like for, uh, all the vacation rental stuff, it's facebook.com forward slash last house on the beach. Nice. And that's where our properties are listed. Uh, and then, uh, Instagram, it's Andrew street is yeah. where I do all my publishing of stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's Andrew street yeah. on Instagram. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, those are good ways to reach out to me. Dude, what's what's coming up for you? Anything new coming down the? Yeah, yeah. I mean, with with work, we've got uh, we're doing Texas Independent Dealers Association conference coming up next week. Nice. Presenting out there, sponsoring, doing a lot of stuff with automation, machine learning, to where now I can scale across a lot of stores without needing a to be expensive and hire a lot of people. Wow! So it's an exciting time to be in in digital advertising. Yeah, it really is. It's cool. I should do Are more it? of it. I should do. I should spend more money with Facebook, shouldn't I? Then, I think that's what you're you trying want to tell to. me. I mean, it sounds like you're getting a lot of exposure right now. But if you want to try to, yeah, you know, see, just test out. Say, hey, is there a larger uh, play yeah. that could be that could be strategized? Yeah, I'd be happy to point point you in in the right direction. I'm talk sure to you, you would. Possible. I know, man. You're you're a good dude. Well, man, this Bye-bye. is um, this is the most um, not personal about the the guy interview I've done so far. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we didn't dig into there. childhood, man. We didn't do any of that. But but uh, it's not it's not shiny. There's nothing fun back there. But yeah. we let, let's do this again down the road. I'd I'd, I'd be happy to yeah uh, jump into. All the missteps and no, nah, we didn't miss stuff. anything, dude. It all unfolded the way it's supposed to, man. I'm, I'm, I, look, I'm very grateful. I appreciate you um, taking the time to come on the show. Um, you're a great, dude. If you guys want to, want to, I mean, follow Andrew if you want to, and and if you have, I mean, if you're in the car business or just need help with some, I mean, he knows his stuff. He's a good dude. I'm sure you can reach out and and Andrew will. Um, either help you or tell you to get lost. <laughs> no. Yeah. And feel free to publish my email address with this. Could be a good way. Just Andrew at dealer. O M G would dealer, be a good way. Andrew at dealer. O M G.com. 
Yeah. Did you Bluetooth my, just my, die? Yeah, just die. Can you still hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't even need that thing then. Yeah. Um, cool, man. Well, All right, I, brother. I, I appreciate it. Appreciate you uh, coming on. Don't hang up. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm going to end the Facebook Live. Thank you to everybody who liked this, loved it, shared it, all the hearts, and we even got a few laughing cry faces, dude. You must have said something right. really funny. So and great. happy belated birthday, man. Happy birthday week. Thank you. I appreciate that, man. 50 is not the milestone it used to be, but it's still a damn good milestone. It's a milestone for me, man. I feel like people might start taking me serious now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I do. All right. We'll see you guys. Thank you.